Hi, everybody. I am back. Um, this lesson, we're going to talk about injuries to the elbow, wrist, and hand. Um, again, a lot of these things, since we're dealing with soft tissue injuries, a lot of the things are going to be redundant, so I won't spend a, a ton of time on this. Um, just getting right to it, a lot of the pictures I'm going to show you in this are, are just different sports that um, places place pressure uh, on the elbow, especially. So cricket, uh, this is the sport of high ally. Those of you down in South Florida know this sport quite well. Um, so lots of things going on in the elbow. Um, pretty complicated again. Not as complicated as the shoulder, but uh, a whole lot can go on. And especially when we get to the wrist, uh, it gets much more complicated. Um, so the movements of the elbow, we have flexion and extension. Okay. We have the forearm that can supinate, which is um, thumb coming back or pronate, thumb going down. Okay, so we kind of like internal and external rotation, supinate, pronate, supinate, pronate. Okay, the wrist, we can flex and extend. And we also have ulnar deviation, which goes toward the ulna on the outside, which is actually the inside on the anatomical position. So the inside and then radial deviation coming out. And this is a bad risk because I have had surgery on this, but so let's see if we can get it on the camera. Ulnar deviation radial deviation, flexion, extension. And then we have our fingers that can flex and extend. And then at the, 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 the joints here at the hand, the MCP joints, um, they also have some adduction, abduction and adduction capabilities, and then some circumduction. And then the thumb, flexion, extension, and some circumduction with the thumb as well. So those are your movements of the elbow, forearm, wrist, hand, and thumb. Um, so again, we're gonna go through the same type of history, find out what's happened to them, uh, what caused the injury, uh, where's their pain, what kind of the pain, uh, is it an achiness, which suggests soft tissue, is it a sharp pain, uh, did they hear or feel a pop again, which is gonna be important with the wrist. Um, chronic achiness uh, with the wrist, that's, that's never a good sign with young kids in particular. So anyway, um, palpation, we're gonna, try to feel that, that the muscle areas and then kind of feel those bones and kind of work our way up and down the bones. Um, and then just prevention things that we're doing with the elbow, forearm, wrist, and hand in particular uh, are just gonna be again, strengthening and, and flexibility exercises in that full range of motion for each joint. Um, thinking about all of the muscles above and below the joint that, that also need to be strengthened to give that, that joint its, its, full, uh, its full strength. Uh, proper mechanics is key. See this a lot with baseballers, right? That like to throw those sidearms, uh, exposing their ulnar collateral ligament in, the, in their elbow uh, to additional risk. Um, and make sure that the equipment that the kids are using is age appropriate, that they, they're not having super heavy equipment to, to deal with. Um, so baseballs, you know, all of that, we always use a, like when we start kids out look young, we get them a nice little rag ball so we can teach proper mechanics and it's not super heavy and hard. Uh, and then as they get a little bit older, the ball gets to be um, a standard size. I, I don't like this picture. This is not old chronobositis, but I think it's just a kind of a funny picture of a guy that's way too muscular. This has got to be Photoshop, right? So old chronobositis, what this is, is basically um, when you fall on your elbow, that those bursa sacs in your elbow can become popped and inflamed. And again, that nice fleshy soft part of the elbow around the the olecranon or olecranon, however you want to pronounce it, uh, this area, nice amount of skin here, that that fluid can just kind of fill that area and can be nice, a big bubble. So um, this particular one on the right here, this is something that obviously they have a hospital gown on. They're in, in the hospital, in the ER, and they're going to get that thing drained. That's a, a real bad case. Usually they're not that, that bad. Uh, but here on the left-hand side, you can see where that bursa sac is. Uh, and that thing is, is quite large and has quite a bit of fluid in it. So uh, the likelihood of, of that thing um, causing some problems and, and, and filling up that, that area of the elbow is, is pretty high if that thing gets punctured. So just be aware of that. Uh, if, if somebody does have a bursitis in their elbow, uh, you wanna get them a nice big volleyball type pad uh, on their elbow um, to protect that, that area from getting hit again. Uh, because if it does, does get hit again, uh, remember that membrane of the bursa, once it's been ruptured, is super thin. Uh, and the likelihood of it getting torn or ruptured again is, is really high uh, in those uh, first few weeks after uh, they get back into activity. 
Uh, contusions, direct blows. Uh, again, we want to make sure that we're um, padding those areas where their contusions are. Um, so just good, good bruises here. A nice uh, example of a good elbow pad on the bottom there. Um, another reason why we want to put pads on these kids is that, you know, if, if they have a, a contusion or, or bursitis or something like that, it's just painful, right? And they don't need to experience that much pain. Um, so they can wear that thing and that make it feel a whole lot better if, if they do land on it. Sprains and strains, we've already talked about this quite a bit. Uh, just that that elbow hyperextension can cause it. Uh, volleyball players, you know, those outside hitters, especially where they're coming in and hitting, anytime we're, we're making contact with the far end of the lever, um, that's going to, that, that, that force is going to be transferred up the joint, right? And it's going to be absorbed right in the elbow. So, and potentially in the shoulder as well. So we want to make sure that we're uh, encouraging icing routines uh, after we're, we're playing. Um, again, uh, volleyball players, uh, somewhat lacrosse players, tennis players, golfers, uh, anything where there's an implement and if you're striking on, on, striking on the end of that implement, uh, that's going to transfer up the chain and, and lead to irritation uh, of those tendons uh, and, and potentially the ligaments in those joints. So different things. We, we talked about Carol uh, multiple times with all of the other joints we've discussed. Uh, rest, ice, compression, elevation, uh, flexibility and strengthening exercises, really working to regain full range of motion as quickly as possible uh, is, is what we want to aim for. We can see with, this is an ulnar collateral sprain. Uh, we can see just a lot of ecchymosis or discoloration in that area. Again, gravity will take it down. So don't be surprised if, you're, if the hand doesn't get puffy and the wrist is puffy and some discoloration down there. Uh, but again, putting a nice soft compression wrap on um, from the middle of the bicep all the way down to the middle of the forearm, if it's an elbow injury, uh, will be really helpful to, to kind of squeeze that swelling out of there uh, so it doesn't collect and accumulate in that area. You can see on this kid here that the wrap marks are there, the, the, the ACE wrap, the, the threads on the ACE wrap uh, are pretty visible. And that's, that's always a good sign. I, I always like seeing that as an athletic trainer because I know then that that wrap helped prevent swelling from getting in those areas. So lateral epicondylitis, we see this with ten, tennis players. Um, it's just a, a, a micro, micro trauma to the extensor muscles of the lateral epicondyle. So if, if anatomical position is palms up, okay, lateral is on the outside. So we're feeling it right up here, right? So can you see my, my hand here? So thumb side right on that side, thumb side right at the joint line. So those muscles, those extensor muscles in the forearm that help extend the elbow get inflamed. Again, think about it in tennis, we have that racket and the ball hits the racket and that force travels up the body, right up the chain. And it's absorbed right at the elbow where those extensor muscles connect into the elbow. So that, that achiness uh, that, that an athlete may complain of is a sign of, of just lateral epicondylitis. Um, the pain may worsen um, in the wrist when they're, they're trying to play or when they're trying to, 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 to move their wrist and hand. Um, they may complain of night, night pains, which means it's just an achiness at night or just soreness at night where it just kind of uh, throbs. Um, so again, for these, we want to make sure that we're getting them a whole lot of ice, um, get them into a doctor if it gets really bad and, and make sure that, that, that they're being taken care of. Um, sometimes they need some anti, anti-inflammatories on board, um, that are a little bit stronger than ibuprofen. So, um, have them be seen, especially if it's getting bad, um, remove them from physical activity and give them that rest that they need for that to heal or at least settle down. Um, Okay, and then make sure proper mechanics, right? That they're doing everything right. Um, a little shoulder strap. Um, so kind of like what we did with the knee with the patella strap underneath the, the kneecap, um, only since this time you're, you're really around muscle in the forearm, you can't use that white tape around there because that would basically lead to a stress fracture down lower because that tape doesn't want to expand with the muscle. So um, getting a, a, a 
a Velcro type of strap. You can get these at sporting goods stores um, that just can just go around the, the top of the, the, the forearm there just below the elbow. Uh, and what that does is it kind of takes some of the tension off of those extender tendons. Um, and so they're not pulling so hard. So that's the, the science behind that, I guess. Medial epicondylitis this time, the pain instead of being on the thumb side at the elbow, it's on the pinky side up at the elbow. Uh, we see this quite a bit with golfers. Um, we see this with forceful re repetitive um, wrist flexion. Uh, we think about golf and we don't think a lot about flexion, but we're coming back in internal rotation and, and, and coming from in full extension. Um, so just understand that the, the care for them is gonna be very similar, uh, that we're trying to, to, to give them a whole lot of rest uh, till the thing settles down, get them into the doctor if it's not settling down, um, make sure we're, we're encouraging them to ice uh, as much as possible. Um, some analgesics, uh, I didn't say this on the last one, but anything when we're dealing with soft tissue, um, some biofreeze or I, I guess deep blue, if you're into uh, Xterra or no, doTERRA, doTERRA products, um, that kind of stuff, icy hot can, can help just a, a nice little rub to, to help uh, do that. If you have access to heat pads, um, having them heat up their 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 elbow or their their muscles in their forearm can also be really helpful before they get going and and help that and and then um, just um, over the counter anti-inflammatories, uh, Aleve if or or uh, ibuprofen those kind of things. Uh, follow the bottle on those and and the recommendations of of the kids' parents. Again, never give drugs out to kids. I have to say that too. Uh, little league elbow uh, or. Uh, this is pretty much the same thing. Again, we have that, that internal rotation that's causing that pain uh, as well. Uh, it's on the medial side. So again, following the pinky up, it's typically on the ulnar collateral side. Um, I posted an article that I want you to read. It's an excerpt from a book that I have my graduate students read. Uh, the book is called Until It Hurts, America's Obsession with Youth Sports and How It Hurts Our Kids. Uh, and a lot of the book talks about, it's written by Mark Hyman. Um, and the book, gets into some of the, the pressures on kids and youth sports. And it, uh, it's a very quick read, um, but one of the stories they tell about is how kids now and you know, 14, 15 year olds, their parents are opting to have ulnar collateral ligament surgery or Tommy John surgery on these kids. Um, and it gets into the ethics. One of the chapters of this book gets into the ethics of that. Um, this is a scary thing because it's a massively, massively invasive surgery. Um, so if, if you like stuff like that, I encourage you to read this. Uh, it gets into some of the injury stuff as well in other chapters. And, and I just think it's a great book. Uh, the excerpt that you're going to read in this class is, is something that was, was posted on the Sports Illustrated site. Um, so it'll just get you started. Um, so anyway, same thing get these kids not pitching a whole lot of pitch counts. Most you, little league baseball rules, we have pitch count rules anyway. Um, too tight of grips, muscle imbalances, all of these things. And again, that same type of strap can be uh, helpful uh, for these kind of kids to take some of that pressure off. So here's just an x-ray that we can show. So when these injuries go bad, they can actually avulse or tear off a piece of the bone. So that tendon that's coming up from the muscle can, can be so strained that it takes a piece of that bone with it and rips it off. Kind of like that Cindy Larson Johansson um, condition I showed you on the knee. So when that happens, um, we're looking at a year or longer away from physical activity for these kids. So again, another reason why to listen to these kids. If they say they're sore, they're sore. Don't make them push it. Dislocated elbows. This is for all my wrestling coaches out there. Um, fall with an outstretched hand. Uh, you get force, uh, usually accompanied by a twist. This is another one that I will say, absolutely don't try to put it back in place. Okay. This is probably one of the most painful injuries that an athlete can experience. Think about how, when you hit your funny bone and how those nerves just go just skyrocket right down the, the, the arm. That's what this feels like, but it's constant. It's not just a couple seconds. So um, severe pain, obvious deformity, um, make sure you get these in to the hospital uh, just as quickly as possible. Uh, and I'm gonna warn you, I'm gonna show you a bad picture right on this next slide. There you go, okay, what it looks like. Okay, we'll get it off there. 
Uh, Collies fractures are just any type of fracture. This picture of Hideki Namatsui is not a Collies fracture. It was just a really cool picture of a forearm fracture. I like to gross my students out once in a while. Um, fall with an outstretched arm um, occurs in the lower end of the radius, right toward the wrist. Uh, one thing I want to say on, on these fractures, if you have young kids, anyone age 17 and younger who breaks their wrist, it's very important, okay? It, even if you think it's a sprain and you're not sure, it's so important uh, that they are seen by a physician and that x-rays are taken. Kids 17 and younger, their growth plates aren't necessarily done. Um, their, their bones aren't done growing and their growth plates are wide open. So if they fracture their growth plate, that can actually stunt the growth of the bone. And that's not a good situation. So anytime that we have a puffy hand, for example, uh, with a kid, uh, we assume that there's a fracture there always. Get ice on it, immobilize it, have mom or dad get him into uh, a doctor and, and get x-rays. Just an x-ray of that, okay? Lots going on bone-wise, uh, just looking at the, the, the bones of the wrist. Uh, think of everywhere there's bones, you have ligaments connecting each bone to each other bone that's adjacent to it, okay? So the, the amount of ligaments in the wrist is dozens, dozens, dozens of, of ligaments in the wrist, okay? And then you also have things going on with the fingers as well. Um, talked about the, the wrist brains as well. Here's a good graphic to show you where all of these, these ligaments are. I'm gonna tell you that I don't know what all of these ligaments are called. I don't need to know what all of these ligaments are called and neither do you, okay? All you need to know is if they sprain their wrist, um, if they're a kid and there's a chance that those growth plates are open, um, have them go in and get checked and get x-rays. If not, um, you know, just kind of see how much pain there is and how much movement they have. If they can't move it a whole lot, then obviously get x-rays. Um, injuries to the finger, mallet fingers. Uh, this is when uh, the you know, you can take that shot to the, to, to, to a finger uh, and it causes that extensor tendon or that tendon that allows the finger to be straight. Better use my fourth finger, not my third middle one, right? Um, so that, that you take that hit and it causes that extender tendon to, to rupture. So their finger is basically stuck in flexion, okay? So just like this, it's actually their, their pip joint or their dip joint. So that end of that, getting hit here ruptures that tendon and their finger goes down okay so it's kind of stuck that and they can't make it go straight okay in comparison a boutonniere deformity is the one where it's that joint just below the hand okay so we see this it's also called a jersey finger because you reach out to make a tackle and you catch that jersey and your finger gets stuck in that jersey and it just rips it out and then they're left with this Really not a huge deal, but you don't want those fingers. Those fingers are gonna get stuck like that and they're gonna be like that forever. So, and then they're gonna to have to, the surgeon's gonna go have to go in and cut the flexor tendon or the tendon that makes it flex, get it straight and keep them straight, okay? So anytime kids hurt their fingers, moral of the story, anytime kids hurt their fingers, get it splinted, um, have them do some exercise, playing with rubber bands, doing some flexion extension, adduction, abduction, um, have them play with some silly putty so they're really working those muscles in their fingers and getting it nice and strong. Um, I always get the question of when I jam my finger, should I pull it? No, almost always when you jam your finger because it's a little saddle joint, you've kind of a bulls off a piece of that bone. We don't wanna make it worse. Uh, pulling the finger doesn't really help anyway. I mean, we can create a little distraction or a little separation and we, that's okay. Don't pull it real hard. Um, but just doing those finger exercises to get it strong again are, are better. And then ganglion cysts, uh, just a little cyst that, that they tend to appear right underneath. Um, sometimes they're called Bible bumps because people say if you drop a Bible on them, you can pop them. Um, it's just a, a, a little synovial sac that, that's uh, around the, the, um, the tendon uh, in the wrist. And uh, look at this, it's dark. Uh, around the tendon of the wrist and um, no big deal unless they start affecting motion. Usually they grow or um, shrink. Um, and if you get them drained, you can do that. And sometimes they, most of the time they come back. So anyway, that's it. That's our lecture for elbow, wrist and hand.